Section 46 of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. The Two Men. There were two youths of equal age, wit, station, strength, and parentage. They studied at the self same schools and shaped their thoughts by common rules. One pondered on the life of man, his hopes, his ending, and began to rate the market's sordid war as something scarce worth living for. I'll brace to higher aims, said he. I'll further truth and purity, thereby to mend the mortal lot and sweeten sorrow. Thrive I not, winning their hearts. My kind will give enough that I may lowly live, and house my love in some dim dell for pleasing them and theirs so well. Idly attired, with features wan, in secret swift he laboured on. Such press of power had brought much gold, applied to things of meaner mould. Sometimes he wished his aims had been to gather gains like other men. Then thanked his God he traced his track, too far for wish to drag him back. He looked from his loft one day, to where his slighted garden lay, Nettles and hemlock hid each lawn, and every flower was starved and gone. He fainted in his heart, whereon he rose, and sought his plighted one, resolved to loose her bond withal, lest she should perish in his fall. He met her with a careless air, as though he'd ceased to find her fair, and said, True love is dust to me, I cannot kiss, I tire of thee. That she might scorn him he was fain, To put her sooner out of pain, For incensed love breathes quick and dies, When famished love a lingering lies. Once done, his soul was so betossed, It found no more the force it lost. Hope was his only drink and food, And hope extinct, decay ensued. And living long so closely penned, He had not kept a single friend, he dwindled thin as phantoms be, and dropped to death in poverty. Meantime, his schoolmate had gone out to join the fortune-finding rout. He liked the winnings of the mart, but wearied of the working part. He turned to seek a privy lair, neglecting note of garb and hair, and day by day reclined and thought how he might live by doing naught. I plan a valued scheme, he said, to some but lend me of your bread and when the vast result looms nigh in profit you shall stand as i yet they took counsel to restrain their kindness till they saw the gain and since his substance now had run he rose to look what might be done he went unto his love by night and said my love i faint in fight deserving as thou dost a crown my care shall never drag thee down he had descried a maid, whose line would hand her much on corn and wine, and held her far in worth above, one who could only pray and love. But this fair read him, whence he failed, to do the deed so blithely hailed. She saw his projects wholly marred, and gloom and want oppressed him hard. To living to so mean an end, whereby he lost his every friend, he perished in a pauper sty, his mate the dying pauper nigh. And moralists reflecting said, as dust to dust in burial red was echoed from each coffin lid, these men were like in all they did. 1866 End of section 46